Um, my name is Christine. I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? Okay. Cool. Uh, can I share a scripture with you? Say again? Can I uh, share a scripture with you? I'm sorry. I'm not understanding what you're saying. You want to ask me something? Yeah. Um, I just like to share a scripture. That's all. Okay. Do you have time? Yeah. Okay. Where, where, who, who are you and where are you from? Tell me that. <laughs> well, I don't like to give my personal information. My name is Christine. I have a phone witnessing ministry. Okay. Do you're you, a witness? you Jehovah's Witness? A Jehovah's Witness? No. Are you? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Well, you guys like talking about the Bible. I know that. Oh, yeah. We're doing a lot of letter writing, a lot of phone calling. Okay. Trying, trying to reach out to people. Yeah. And, uh. We've had some good results on the phone because people are worried about the pandemic. Mm. Yeah. True. Yeah. How do you get, like, numbers and stuff with everybody having a cell phone now? You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I look up somebody and they're all, like, unlisted. Yeah, a lot of them are not, yeah. not listed. That's true. How do you guys uh, keep going with that? <laughs> you know, there are a number of sites that you can use. Well, oh. I, don't know, I, I don't know how you got my number because you're an out-of-state number. Mm -hmm. Where are you what state are you in? I live in Arizona. Arizona? But, yeah, but anyway, um, the verses I was going to share is Romans 5, 6 through 11. Um, do you want to yeah. look at it, or do you want me to just read it? Yeah. The wife's getting the tablet. Oh, she's she could hear this? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay, great. What, what chapter did you say? Five Romans five six through eleven. Oh, she's quick with that tablet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> now you know why she's looking that up. Something that you would be very interested in mm -hmm. is the official website of mm -hmm. Joe's Witnesses. Okay. It's J W dot org. Okay, well, I'll check and it out. You get so much information on there. There's beautiful videos. There's all, you know, uh, you can download the uh, New World Translation of the Bible plus other translations of the Bible. Hmm. And, it, and uh, it's just a wealth of information on jw.org. You, you can find out what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. Hmm. You, you can uh, see different things about the life of Jesus. It's just a fantastic uh, inter, uh, um, tool to, to use, you know. What would you What would your impression be if I said my church doesn't let only lets me go to um, our own website? Your uh, well, I guess that's up to you and your conscience, you know. Yeah, but what um, if What if they made people feel like actually scared or guilty to look at anything else? So I could, you know, then in that case, I couldn't go to jw.org, you know. What would oh, you? Really? What would your impression be of that? Of that, if that was the situation, is well, that a right thing to do? I, you know, I think a person ought to have an open mind. You know. Oh yeah. The, the, the Bible really in, encourages us to to investigate. It really yeah. does. So, um, if I listen to one of those talks, would you listen to something I would send you? I'm sorry, say again? Well, if I listen to one of those videos on JW.org, would you listen to something I send you? Uh, well, what, what, would it be a scripture or what? Or like a sermon or looking at a different website that I like. Well, tell me what the website is. Oh, well, I like one called um, CARM.org, C-A-R-M. It stands for Christian Apologetics Research Ministry. Oh, uh -huh. no, never heard of it. No. Yeah, so would you would you look at that if I look at JW.org, kind of make a deal with you there? <laughs> we we could take a look at it. Really? I don't I don't know that I would agree with everything. Oh no, no, I I that's right. You you have to. That's your own um, thought, but um, I know I know we're going to agree with a lot of things. We're going to agree that Jesus is God's Son. He is our only means of salvation. We have to pray. To Jehovah through Jesus, would you agree with that? Yes, but when um, you say He is God's Son um, to us, um, 
it's oh, it's very different because you know he's the only begotten Son of God, and also we can see um, that he was the Word who was with God eternally. Those, that word yeah. was means already was, already existing when time began, and that he was God is how all other translations have it, meaning his um, nature. It doesn't mean he was God the Father, but it means his nature. And so when the Jew, when he, when the Jews accused him of saying he was the Son of God, um, you can see what their reaction was. They they called it blasphemy. And, me, and, you know, there's repeated times where they said he was blaspheming, also when he said he was coming with the clouds. No, they, they accuse, the Jews accused yeah. Jesus. Yeah, they were Jesus. totally correct. He didn't correct them at all. And you know that when Thomas, doubting Thomas, saw the risen Jesus, he said, the Lord of me and the God of me is literally what the Greek says. And Jesus said, blessed are you. So, yeah. you know, yeah, we, but, you know, I really encourage you to look at karm.org. I mean, it, it has theology, apologetics, you know, like for skeptics. And um, if you are allowed to, I love that you said about an open mind. I think that was really great. Yeah, but think, consider one scripture. Uh-huh. I mean, there's so many scriptures, but in Colossians 1.15, uh-huh. Colossians 1.15, it says Jesus was the firstborn. Right. Right. And Jesus was the firstborn, which was Jehovah's firstborn, first creation, his son. Yeah, first creation is not the same word as firstborn. Firstborn in the Bible signifies the preeminent one. Um, like David is called the firstborn when he was actually the youngest. And look at uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim was called the firstborn. He was its transferable status. So, um, yeah. The fact that Jesus was born. No, he no. Firstborn does not mean born. It, it's no a status, born, and you certainly born. don't mean he was born from Jehovah and born. Mary. Or so, what, what do you? How did that happen? Because you believe why, he was preexistent. Why doesn't it mean that? I mean, when Jesus also in First Corinthians 15, the end of the chapter. In fact, all of First Corinthians 15 talks about Jesus handing the kingdom back mm-hmm. over to his mm-hmm. father when he dropped in under his feet. Right, because he completed his mediatorial function. And I can show you scriptures that say Jesus will reign forever and ever. So it's a little more complicated than just a simple thing like that. And that's why some people think it actually means God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit will reign, you know, after the mediatorial kingdom in the eternal state. I mean, you know, Jesus is called the first and the last, the, the Lord of Lords, the Lord of glory. He's called God, creator, true light. Well, you know, the the I think in JW.org, they don't really um, show much about those kind of verses. They, they just show uh, proof, yeah. proof verses for Unitarianism. But um, well, anyways, can I just share the verses I was going to share? I'm sorry, say again. Could I just read those verses from Romans? I just wanted to get yeah, your yeah. thought on it. Okay. Romans, Romans what, 5? Yeah, 5, 6 through 11. Okay, just a minute. Okay, uh, 6 through 11, okay. Okay, um, this is the new King James. I mean, I like King James too, but... Um, for when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled, we were reconciled, past tense, to God through the death of his son, much yeah, more. Notice, notice that right there. Mm-hmm. Through the death of his son. Right. Not through, not through the death of God. Right, right. God so, often means God the Father. But yeah, much more having, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received, have received, the reconciliation. So what I want to ask you is, 
since it says believers have been justified by his blood and have received the reconciliation. Have you been justified, which means declared righteous and reconciled to God through Christ? Right. That's the only way we can get reconciled to God, yes. Right. I mean, have you been in past tense, though, or are you looking toward some kind of process that you have to fulfill for for now and for a thousand years of tests? Uh, does the Watchtower say you have been reconciled? Have they? Do they teach that you have been justified by his blood? By his blood. That's right. the only way can be, yes. Right. And if you're not in the New Covenant... What verse can you show me that says you you are saved by the blood of Christ that is apart from the new covenant? Because I know this much that they say you are not in the new covenant. No, the new covenant. Jesus uh, made the new covenant with his actual right. eleven apostles the night that he was put uh, the night that he had this uh, Passover meal with them, the Last Supper, and. Of course, then those that have been anointed uh, since that time, the first century Christians were anointed by Holy Spirit. They could speak different languages there when Peter made his uh, Pentecost. And uh, down through the years, there's been those that are anointed that will reign in the heavens with Jesus Christ uh, in the new world. But that's only a number of 144,000, as Revelation brings out. The majority of mankind, the great crowd, will live right here on a paradise earth. That's what the Bible really says. Okay, teaches. well, again, what I was saying is, are, are you, where in the Bible is it talk about how you will eventually be justified and reconciled to God and, and a son of God? Because I know this much that they say that you aren't right now and that the New Testament prob primarily applies to the 144,000. So where is your verses that that apply salvation to you, these great crowd people? I, I don't know of any, but maybe you do. Yeah. Got those, those verses you just read, yeah. that's the only way we can be real, reconciled well, to, to Jehovah. Yeah. Right, but, that, but you know what? They're going to say these verses don't apply to you. And if they do, some, in some places they say they do apply, and in some places they say... They don't apply because if you look at Romans 8, where it talks about the sons of God, that he, he has sent the Holy Spirit in their heart, which cries, Abba, Father. That's uh -huh. just talking about the same people as it's talking about here. There's there It doesn't uh, have any break for some kind of class it's talking about those who are regenerated, born again, justified, declared righteous now have been. And so that's a beautiful thing. And there's so many, we call them exceeding great and precious promises in the New Testament that they actually say are, are not to you because you have to go through this process of adhering to the organization and then tests for a thousand years is, is exactly what they, they teach from my understanding. Well, no, I think you're misunderstanding it uh, but because we, we, we can't work for our salvation salvation is a undeserved kindness from from god yeah no they, they teach that all the time that you must obey god's commands advocate the kingdom which means the watchtower society and adhere to the anointed class they even said this it's so outrageous come to jehovah's organization for salvation what does that mean and where does the bible say that uh, you you broke it up there. I didn't get what you said. Yeah, well, they, they even said, come to Jehovah's organization for salvation. And another place in their writings, they said, preaching ensures your own salvation. And that's why a reason to preach. That's, that's not true. You're, mis, you're misquoting. Oh, it's please. very simple to understand. It's in yeah, a kingdom yeah. ministry. Listen, hey, I think you're doing great by reaching out to people. Uh -huh. We're doing the same thing. And I know that, you know, there are a lot of things that we're not going to agree with this on the scriptures. You know, it was interesting at reading, you said that's the New King James. Uh -huh. You know, one of the New King James has actually restored Jehovah's name to the scriptures where they belong. Yeah, that's because anybody can do that because it's called, um, what do they call that? When it's so old, any, anybody can do that. It's not under copyright. Oh, no. That doesn't, not. no scholars would do that because there's no, see, 
when when the translations, the main translations that are you know more widely used, um, are based on Greek manuscripts that exist. And the New World Translation inserts Jehovah where it is not in any Greek manuscript. They even admit that. No, no, no. They've gone back to as much of the manuscripts as they've been able to get. There aren't and, any with Jehovah in the New Testament. They uh, even admit that. There, there aren't any. They believe they were all <laughs> somehow removed. They, they you know, have this story about that. They were removed, but the thing is that just in the context, too. And, you know, you look at uh, many of the King James Bibles in the forward that will explain why they removed the name where it should have been left in there. Because you go back to the older manuscripts. And, uh, no, not for the New Testament. No, there's no there's no tetragrammaton in the New Testament in any Greek manuscript that we, we have. And you can you can search that. that that's true. And the, but, but in the New World Translation, they claim it's translated from Greek manuscripts. Another problem is that nobody that was on the translating committee was was fluent enough and well, in Greek to do that. So those brothers, those brothers that translated the the, uh, new, the new Bible, they were very fluent in no. any language. They were not. It's known who they were now. It's it's totally known who they were. The Watchtower discourages college, and no, they were not educated in languages. They must have used other resources and things. You know, you're, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. Okay, with those, okay, yeah. no problem. I just wanted no. to share that, and I, I hope that you'll realize that Jesus is your mediator. They teach he's only mediator for the anointed. We, we agree with that. We absolutely agree with yeah. that. Well, I can show you in their literature where they say Jesus is only the mediator for the anointed class. No. Well, no. Yes. <laughs> By means of Jesus that we have a hope of eternal life. That's right. Period. That's right. So why would they say such a thing? But you're misreading what they're saying. No, it's very clear. Check out uh, Worldwide Security under the Prince of Peace, page 10. They, no. they haven't changed that since then. No. Well, listen. Um, Do you want any more references on that? I, I'm, I'm not going to continue. I really do appreciate what you're doing. Oh, okay. I know, okay. I know it's, uh, we all need to be reaching out to people because this world is in a, a mess. You'll certainly agree with that. <laughs> it's going from bad to worse, but we know that the Great Tribulation is coming. They always said that since 1870s. They said, That's right. Yeah, but, they always said it. They even gave dates for you, you it. I guess they gave that up, right? You don't. You don't believe we're uh, living in the last days of no. the system? No. No. No one. No one can know that. We should always be watching and ready, but no one can know that. No. Right. You agree with that? Yeah. The prophecy. The prophecy is all point that when we see things happening today, uh -huh. today earthquakes, the. Uh, pandemics that we're in right now this is all an indication yeah. and the fact that the, pre the preaching of the good news is being done worldwide now and uh that that's part of that prophecy that Jesus yeah if, if there's anyone that it, you want to look to to understand bible prophecies and tell you that it's the last days it certainly wouldn't be the watchtower bible and tract society and you need to really review their history from uh, apart from their website because it's very dishonest and only tells you part of the story. <laughs> they said that they used current events at that time in the late 1800s. They they take whatever current events and they try to put it into that. So that's this is nothing new and they've said that the whole time. They they predicted dates, time frames that failed. You know, we we talked about having an open mind. So. Uh... I hope we can both have an open mind. But listen, uh, I think it's quite strange that you got somebody in Maine all the way from Arizona, but that's okay. Well, you know, Jesus said, go into all the world. Yeah, absolutely. So no problem yeah. there. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this. Uh -huh. How have you guys made out in Arizona as far as this bad weather? Have you, have you been affected oh, by that? Oh, no, not at all. No, because 
you know, Arizona, it really doesn't, occasionally it might like just have a little snow, like every couple of years. Now, Northern Arizona get, gets uh, colder and has seasons and stuff, but I, I'm in Southern Arizona. How about you? Oh. Well, we've had a lot of cold weather. For, mm. It's been a very easy winter. for We're in northern Maine, mm. uh, way way up there mm-hmm. near Presque Isle. But uh, it's been an easy winter for us. The last so three weeks, we've had sub uh, sub freezing and and, and sub zero mm. uh, weather every night. Mm-hmm. And mm. like this, uh, this coming week, um, Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to warm up to the low 30s. Oh, it's no. Been, <laughs> That's it's warm. Been, it's been. Uh, yeah. When around it's here, if it's like 50, we're like, oh, we can't go outside. It's only 50. <laughs> we need a coat. <laughs> but I was raised in the Midwest, so I did. I've been there, done that, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was raised in Florida and, and North Georgia, and then we, but we've been in Maine now. Well, my wife's from Maine. And, oh, uh, yeah. How did you how did you adjust to that? Cuz that's pretty mild, you know, those where you're from. Oh yeah. No, it's uh the Air Force sent me to to Bangor, Maine and that's oh. where I met my wife. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so you're trapped now we're, there. We're three and a half mi- three and a half hours north of Bangor now. Oh, okay. So. Wow. Do you like it? Are you going to stay there? Oh, we love it. It's beautiful country. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, yeah. I guess you pay the price with the winter, but then you enjoy the other the other times. Yeah. Well, we pay the price in the summer. <laughs> Definitely. Well, well, listen. It's been nice talking. Yeah, you, you too. You have a good, have a good night. Okay? Thanks for talking. God bless you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Bob. See ya.